And with Tesla, I mean, he's essentially selling caviar to buy a two dollar slice of pizza and Twitter. How's it going everyone? This is Daniel. In this video, we are going to be talking about Tesla stock, the overall stock market. We're gonna go over a look at detailed breakdown of Elon Musk Twitter acquisition. We have some important updates. We're gonna be talking about that and also we're gonna cover some important things that we need to be watching out for for Tesla before the earnings and also after the earnings. So we're gonna cover all this important information in this video coming up. As you can see over here, we have Tesla stock today sitting at $240.81. We have been seeing some selling pressure coming into Tesla. As you can see, at one point in time, Tesla was actually down more than 4%. But overall, we recovered it pretty well through throughout the day, especially after the afternoon. We closed only down 3.46%. When you look at Tesla compared to the overall market, as you can see, the overall market was not doing well today too. There are some sectors that have been selling off, like we have some bank stocks selling off, utility sectors selling off. But you can see that Tesla is one of those stocks that saw a lot of selling pressure from the price action, as you see, we're down 3.19%. So there is still some big concern with Tesla investors that Elon Musk might potentially be selling Tesla stock to finance and to potentially close out the deal to acquire Twitter. And we are getting some important updates about the trial also. So as you can see from some of the headlines that we've seen, Twitter trial is still on. So the only thing that's going to stop from Elon Musk being sued by Twitter is for Twitter to officially unplug this lawsuit and for them to come to agreement. We know that they want to finalize the deal. They came out and they stated that. So it's only going to be a matter of time before we get the official statement from them. And another important thing, of course, that we've been getting left and right is that how Elon Musk is going to be financing this Twitter deal. So $44 billion, you know, when he initially started to get financing, there's been several banks that went and they offer financing it. They offer debt for Elon Musk for him to acquire. And unfortunately, that was in April. There's been a lot of things that's changed. The interest rates has gone up. So you never know what these banks could come out and say, okay, since things have changed, they might actually change their terms and conditions when it comes to the loan that they're providing for Elon Musk. Interest rates has gone up significantly and uh, Elon Musk might potentially have to sell, you know, his Tesla shares to acquire Twitter. So later on, we're going to be watching a detailed breakdown video about Dan Ives talking about this specific thing. Of course, he mentioned some great analogy. We're going to be checking out the video. But overall, you know, that is one of the biggest concerns that we're seeing with Tesla investors is that we might be seeing some more selling pressure coming in with Tesla as we go through this situation. But overall, when you look at Twitter stock, it's doing good you know eventually it's going to be trading at $54.20 and we've been getting a lot of price target changes analysts coming out and saying and changing their price targets to $54.20 and even Dan Ives came out and changed his price target we're going to be hearing from him in detail breaking down of what he thinks about this Twitter Elon Musk deal he mentioned some great points about that and he also talked about you know what Tesla investors need to be watching out for we're going to be checking out that video and then I'm going to come back and then we're going to talk about Tesla stock the overall market you know what to expect for the next few days as we head into Tesla earnings that is coming up in October 19th so let's check out this video first Dan Ives of Wedbush has been on a journey following this, raising his Twitter price target to guess what, 54.20, and saying the soap opera now comes to an end with Musk owning Twitter at the original price tag. For Musk, the irony is the easy part of this deal was buying Twitter. The hard part will be fixing it with monetization and subscriber engagement. We expect the deal to close without any major issues over the next few weeks. Dan, can I pick up on the last piece of that? Why do you think this closes without major issues, given the debt side of the story that Shanali just went through? Yeah, I mean, clearly that there are some debt issues that the banks are going to need to deal with. But in terms of Twitter's board, you know, we believe over the next 24 hours that they take away their lawsuits. And I believe this deal could close as early as next week. Because for Twitter, you know, that this was a situation where Musk saw writing on the wall. He knew he was not going to win in Delaware. And I think it, it, it's sort of now this old sort of Western standoff now ultimately ends with Musk owning Twitter uh, probably by next week. If it happens by next week, we start talking about X. Can you tell me what X actually is? 
Look, I think that's part of the problem. The easy part, ironically, for Musk was buying this. The hard part's going to be fixing it. The monetization is going to be an ever like uphill battle. And of course, there could be some subscriber that they could add from a monetization. They could look for more you know, content partners. But this is going to be just a massive transformation in the next 18, 24 months. And it just comes down our view from the beginning. I mean, this was a ridiculous price that he's paying, but ultimately got locked into it. And with Tesla, I mean, he's essentially selling caviar to buy a $2 slice of pizza on Twitter. I'll get to the Tesla side of it in just a moment. Dan, who's running this company? I mean, I think, look, in the near term, it could be Musk, but ultimately he's going to have to farm this out to some social media uh, experience execs because, you know, th this is not his uh, sort of swim lane in terms of knowing how to turn around Twitter. But it it's part of the problem here. Spread too thin, and that will be a worry, especially for Tesla investors. I won't try and extend the analogy and talk about caviar on pizza, but can you tell me about the relationship between Tesla and Twitter from here, how you expect that to develop in any way, shape, or form? The biggest problem, Ed hit on it, is does he have to sell more stock? I mean, we believe it could be up to $3 billion that he sells, and, and that continues to be a bit of an overhang. But I think it contained overhang here. But the broader worry is just key man risk. I mean, does he start to juggle too many balls at the same time? Twitter's a new kid on the block. Tesla needs Musk more than any other time, given what we're seeing in EV supply chain. is coming off a delivery miss. So, look, I think for Tesla investors, they're just worried – you know, this has been a nightmare. Look forward to be in the rearview mirror. But clearly, there's some work to be done ahead. It's not in the rearview mirror yet. Dan, can we finish there? Can we talk about risk factors to your view? You're not the only one who struggled to understand through the summer as to whether this would close or not. What's the number one risk that you think would prevent this from closing? The number one risk would be the Twitter board ultimately not being comfortable with the financing, given some of the issues that you're talking about, and basically not pulling their lawsuit. Then th this really starts to get complex if this actually starts to go into Delaware and they do not pull their lawsuits. And I think that probably is the most complicating factor because, of course, Musk, Musk and Prague and the Twitter board are not going to be doing a candlelight dinner. There's no trust factor. They're sneak bitten. That's going to be the issue. I imagine there won't be a candlelight dinner with the banks anytime soon either. So as you can see, Tesla stock has been seeing a lot of selling pressure. We got the delivery numbers that came out on Sunday. In spite of that, we saw a sell off. And now we have this Twitter thing that's going on. So that is not relatively good. Also, the overall market is seeing some form of a sell off today, but the past two days was relatively good. But let's go over and look at exactly what to expect for Tesla as we approach the earnings in October 19. So, this price range that we're looking at right now that Tesla has been the past few months is a good supply and demand zone. And if Tesla just continues to trade within this range, if there is no huge big news or if we don't see a big massive sell off happening with Elon Musk or any kind of a breaking news that came out that can affect it, we might potentially be trading within this range within between around 260 to the lowest that it can possibly go is around a 220 to 215. So we could potentially be trading within this range for the next few days. Eventually, the earnings are going to be coming out on October 19, depending upon what Elon Musk is going to be saying and how investors are going to be reacting. It's going to be very, very interesting to watch. We might get a break out to the upside, or we might potentially be you know, breaking down of this range that we've been in through several months before in the past. So it's going to be a really important thing. This is going to be a really important price zones to watch out for. So just be on the lookout for that. But I think we're definitely going to be in this range for the next few days until we get the earnings and then until we get the more updates about Elon Musk and Twitter coming out within the next few days, within the next few weeks, you know. So that's going to be really interesting to watch out for. But let me know in the comments below, participate on the poll that I just posted. Do you believe that Elon Musk made a mistake when it comes to acquiring Twitter for $44 billion? Me personally, I think $44 billion is a lot of money. He could have actually gotten it for way less than that, but that's just my opinion. But I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments stream below. Participate on the poll, and I'll catch you guys on another video. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and have a wonderful day.